Hi everyone, this is Miss Moore and today we are exploring the law of conservation of energy and how it can be applied to analyze situations where objects are dropped from varying heights. We will be applying this law to the conversion from gravitational potential energy to kinetic energy for falling objects. If you don't have a copy of the lesson notes in front of you today, you can make your own notes using lined paper or graph paper. Let's start with a few different warm-up questions here that use skills that we learned in Lesson 2, Kinetic and Potential Energy, and Lesson 3, Energy Conservation and Conversion. Please pause the video here while you try A, B, and C. Okay, let's go over our solutions together. For warm-up question A, we had an object held stationary above the ground. Recall that stationary means that the initial speed of the object is zero. It's just being held still. What is the gravitational potential energy of this object? Start by making the list of things that you know from the question and identifying what you're supposed to find, EP. Then write the formula for gravitational potential energy and substitute in the values that you know. I got 237 joules because the question asked us to round to the nearest joule. In part B, a diver standing at the top of a diving board has gravitational potential energy because they're above the surface of the water and they could fall. In fact, they have 3,240 joules of gravitational potential energy. In this question, we're supposed to find how high above the water they are, or h. In order to do that, we have to take our formula for gravitational potential energy and algebraically rearrange it to isolate h. We get h equals Ep divided by m times g. Plugging in our numbers, I got that the diving board is 3 meters above the water. For question c, I've started my solution but I haven't finished it just so I can give you some hints in case you got stuck here. This question is different from parts a and b because it involves change. We have an object going from one location to another. The iPhone starts on the table and ends on the floor. During that process there was a transfer of energy. So this question is different. Further, we don't actually know v final. We don't know how fast the iPhone is going when it hits the ground. We're sincerely hoping that it's less than 5 meters per second because if it is 5 or greater, the screen will crack. So this is a question that involves energy change or energy conversion, and you're going to need to use your energy conversion formula to solve it. Pause the video here if you think that's enough of a hint for you. Starting with our formula, potential plus kinetic energy initially equals potential plus kinetic energy at the end, or final, we're able to pare that down by saying the phone has no kinetic energy initially because it's sitting still on the table. And at the end, right before it hits the ground, h is basically zero, so it has no more gravitational potential energy. This gives us EP initial equals EK final. Go ahead and substitute in your formulas for each of these quantities and then algebraically isolate V or the speed of the iPhone. How fast is it going right before it hits the ground? 4.6 meters per second, the screen will be okay. In today's lesson, we're going to be focusing on questions just like this, where we have an energy conversion as an object goes from one location to another. This is actually the simplest form of this problem, where the object has no initial kinetic energy, i.e. it was dropped and not thrown. When something is thrown, it has an initial speed, and we're going to be practicing that today. As we learned in our previous lesson, the law of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but it can be changed from one form to another. Therefore, the total energy of an isolated system remains constant. Energy is transformed from one type to another, but it's not lost. It doesn't vanish or go away. In physics 10, we're going to ignore energy losses due to friction. This means that we'll assume mechanical energy is conserved.
Now this isn't very realistic because in reality most interactions between objects involve some form of friction whether something is sliding across a surface and there's friction between the object and the surface or something is falling through the air and there's friction between the air molecules and the object but that makes the calculation rather advanced and so we're going to save that for physics 11. So in physics 11 we'll learn how to account for the changes in thermal energy that arise as a result of friction. In physics we always approach problems the same way and so now that the problems we're doing are getting more advanced I'd like us to formalize the approach that we're taking so you can refer back to it later if you get stumped. The first thing we always do is identify the given quantities using their symbols and units. Please remember the difference between a symbol and a unit. For example, if we were dealing with height, the symbol would be h and the unit for height would be meters, m. Next you identify what you're trying to find and you write the formula that includes that quantity. Then we rearrange the formula using algebra to isolate the variable that we're looking for. We do this before we substitute known values. Finally, we substitute known values and round our solution to the required number of decimals. In Physics 10, the question will tell you how accurate your answer needs to be. In Senior Physics, you're going to learn about something called significant figures that will show you how detailed your answer needs to be. In your answer, please include your units. Below, here's all the formulae that we've learned so far. Kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, mechanical energy, and the conservation of energy formula. Also, gravitational acceleration is 9.81 meters per second squared, but this is only true for Earth. So if you're dealing with a question that involves the Moon or Mars, G is not 9.81. Let's do the first example together. An 8,930 kilogram helicopter hovers at a constant altitude of 1,524 meters above the ground. That's two quantities that we know. The mass is 8,930 kilograms and the height above the ground is 1,524 meters. What does the word hovers mean? I always find it helpful to draw a diagram, especially in a problem that involves energy change. Please forgive my helicopter. Hovers means that it's staying at a constant altitude or staying at the same height above the ground. In this case, that height is h, 1,524 meters. If the helicopter's engine was to suddenly fail, determine the kinetic energy with which the helicopter would hit the ground. We are looking to find the kinetic energy upon impact, or EK final. Assume mechanical energy is conserved. This releases us from our responsibility to account for friction. We're always going to assume this in Physics 10. We need to start by writing the formula that includes kinetic energy final. You'll also notice this is a problem that involves change. Initially, the helicopter is hovering in the air and then we assume that it falls, so the final situation will be right before it hits the ground. Here's our formula. Initial kinetic plus potential energy equals final kinetic plus potential energy. The next step is to figure out which of these quantities is zero. If the helicopter is hovering perfectly right before its engine fails, it has no kinetic energy, so EK initial is zero. Right before it hits the ground, there's basically no space left between the helicopter and the ground, so the gravitational potential energy is zero. This leaves us with EP initial equals EK final. We are looking for EK final, so we are not going to replace it with its formula, one half mv squared. Don't do that. We need to find it so we don't replace it. We do, however, replace EP initial, or MGH. Now we have MGH equals EKF. 
We don't have to do any other algebra for this problem because the thing we're looking for is already isolated. Go ahead and substitute in your values. Our final answer is going to be very large. You're welcome to express it in scientific notation if you'd like to. I'll give it in regular form and scientific so you can see both. EK final equals 133,507,429 joules. Or you can express it in scientific notation as 1.33 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 joules. And actually that 5 causes the 3 to round up, so it should be 1.34 times 10 to the 8 joules. Okay, please try example 2 on your own, pausing the video here while you do it. This example is very similar to the one we just did because it also involves an object being dropped. A child drops a loony from the top of an office tower. Drop tells us that the initial speed of that object is zero, which in turn means that the initial kinetic energy of that object is zero. We're also looking for the final kinetic energy in this example, which means that when we substitute into the equation for conservation of energy, we leave EK final as is. The final answer is 32.3 joules of kinetic energy. Let's do example three together. A woman riding a Ferris wheel throws her 2.3 kilogram purse from a height of 158 meters above the ground. If the purse was thrown downward with an initial speed of 1.8 meters per second, determine the kinetic energy and the speed of the purse right before it hits the ground. Pause the video here while you set up this problem using the method of listing quantities and writing the correct formula. Okay, I've set up the problem by listing the quantities that I know, identifying what I'm supposed to find, writing the formula that we need to use, and drawing a diagram to help me conceptualize it. This question is different because an object is thrown downward. This means that the initial speed is no longer zero. So when you begin modifying your conservation of energy formula, we used to cross initial kinetic energy off and now we can't. We can, however, cross off final potential energy because right before it hits the ground, the gravitational potential energy is basically zero. So we're left with initial kinetic energy plus initial potential energy equals final kinetic energy. In this problem, we're supposed to find the speed with which it hits the ground and the kinetic energy with which it hits the ground. The easiest way to solve this is to actually do the kinetic energy first and then find the speed afterwards. To do this, we're going to leave EK final in this form without substituting its equation. We'll substitute 1 half times mass times initial speed for our initial kinetic energy and mass times gravitational acceleration times height for our initial potential energy. You may have noticed that each term in this equation contains mass. We can factor that out. It doesn't change our answer, but it means a little bit less writing. And factoring is a math 10 skill, which hopefully we're familiar with at this point. So by factoring mass out to the front of our equation, we have m times 1 half v initial squared plus gh equals ek final. Let's go ahead and put our values in. The final answer is EK final equals 3,568.7 joules. How do you think we could now find the final speed? If you thought of the kinetic energy formula, you're right. EK equals 1 half mv squared. All you need to do is rearrange this equation for v and substitute in your values. When you do this, you'll have v equals the square root of 2 times EK all divided by M, which is 55.7 meters per second. 
please pause the video here while you try example 4 on your own. Okay, let's go over our answer. So if the iPhone 11 can survive an 11-foot drop test, could it survive an 8-foot test where it's thrown instead of dropped? I started off with my calculation for if the iPhone is thrown from 8 feet with an initial speed of 3.5 meters per second. This time, we're isolating V final. In order to do that, we're going to divide every term in the equation by M, and then multiply each side of the equation by 2. This will help us to isolate VF. Finally, we take the square root of each side, and we have VF equals the square root of VI squared plus 2GH8. I made sure to distinguish between the two different heights in this question by using the subscripts 11 and 8 to represent 11 feet and 8 feet. This is really helpful when you're dealing with multiple quantities that use the same symbol, like H. When the iPhone is thrown from a height of 8 feet, it's traveling at 7.7 .7 meters per second right before it hits the ground. But will it survive? In order to know that, we have to perform a calculation where the iPhone is dropped from 11 feet. Now we can cheat a little bit here because we've already done all the algebra to build an equation for when an object is thrown. You'll notice that the only difference between the equation for when an object is thrown and when it's dropped is that we have a V initial squared in it. We can use this same equation and acknowledge that V initial is zero if the object is dropped. So then our equation becomes V final equals two times gravitational acceleration times height. Since the iPhone was going 8.2 meters per second when it was dropped from a height of 11 feet, it will definitely survive its throw from 8 feet when it's only going 7.7 .7 meters per second. Okay, that's it for today. Time to work on assignment 4. Please don't forget to check your answers before you turn in your work. Bye for now.